Hey everyone, it's Zach Beck. Remote work has been on the rise over the last few years due to technological advancements that have further been augmented because of the pandemic. And as a result of this, a recent study conducted by Stanford University found that 42% of US adults are now working from home remotely full time. And it appears as though that is not going to change anytime soon, even after the pandemic is over. As a result of this, various states are creating incentive programs to encourage people to move away from more expensive states and cities to try and bring them into their states to stimulate their own economies. And what we have found is states like Georgia, Alabama, Kansas, and Oklahoma have created these financial incentive programs that might be beneficial to you. So what I wanna do in this video is break down in detail what these incentive programs are, how they could benefit you financially, and what this means for our broader economy as a whole. So let's take our time, dive into the details, and jump into it right now. One of the incentive programs that is in place right now is in Shoals, Alabama, and they are offering $10,000 to individuals willing to relocate there. And those individuals are eligible if they make over $52,000 a year, and those payments will actually be distributed over the course of the year because they want someone to actually come and stay and actually establish roots in that area, hopefully stimulating their economy by patronizing their different businesses, by contributing to that, that community as a whole. But what we are seeing is that people are taking them up on this particular offer, especially if you consider the circumstances circumstances, the cost of living in Alabama is dramatically lower than say California, New York, or even Florida for that matter. And people are deciding they want to go in that direction. There are people coming from cities all across the country, whether they're leaving Seattle, San Diego, New York, Miami, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and places that do cost a bit more to live. For example, you could take $10,000 would go a long way in Alabama when it comes to purchasing a home. You could actually have enough to then put it on a down payment for a two to three bedroom house. In comparison, you would need probably close to 50 to 60 to even $70,000 to be able to put 20% down to purchase a house here in Southern California where I live in San Diego, or if you're up in Seattle, or even if you're in New York. So with that bearing in mind, people are understanding that this might be a great opportunity for them to have the type of lifestyle they like, being able to live in the type of environment they prefer prefer while they can still get the same work done in their home. So you can see why this type, this type of incentive program is gaining some traction. Another city that is offering this type of program is Savannah, Georgia. They are actually offering up to $2,000 of incentive to bring people over there. Now what happens is that individual who comes there has to have experience in the tech sector, preferably two to three years of experience in technology. Furthermore, they have to sign a one-year lease or they have to buy a property and they have to obtain a Georgia driver's license specifically in Chatham County where Savannah, Georgia is located. Now $2,000 isn't necessarily a ton of money in comparison to the $10,000 being offered by the Shoals, but it shows once again that cities are getting in this environment where they're trying to be competitive and trying to lure people into their areas because they realize they don't necessarily have to bring in new businesses, they just need to bring in new workers. And it's more effective financially for them to offer this type of financial incentive instead of offering tax rates for someone to build a brick and mortar location in their vicinity. On that note, the cost of living in Savannah, Georgia is 10% less than the national average. Therefore, that $2,000 will go a bit further when it comes to allocating it there versus say a place like San Diego, Seattle, Washington DC, Dallas, or elsewhere. A more lucrative incentive program is being offered by Tulsa, Oklahoma, where they are providing a $10,000 stipend as well as $1,000 for housing for an entire year. So if someone's looking to relocate there, they're going to have more financial incentives with even less stipulations and requirements associated with it. And on that note, people are flocking to these different areas and leaving these coastal cities and states to try and find a more affordable cost of living environment where they can still work the same amount. So with that being the case, we're seeing between Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Shoals, Alabama, and Savannah, Georgia, some very competitive issues associated with these different cities. As someone who works in a municipality, works for a city, I could see this becoming a trend long term where cities are now competing for workers instead of competing for businesses. Now Topeka, Kansas is actually offering a slightly different incentive program where they're offering $10,000 for individuals to actually utilize towards purchasing a home or they're offering up to $5,000 for a one year lease. They're trying to encourage people once again to come into that vicinity and do so by establishing roots. And what you're gonna find is the cost of living in Topeka, Kansas is very low. The typical house cost is actually $142,000 for a median house. Bear in mind when you're in San Diego where I live, the median cost is over half a million dollars for even not a new construction 
constructed house, but actually an older home. So what you might see is that people who want to go there might be able to have more economic incentive to do so. And if you work remotely currently, this could be a viable path for you. Now, bear in mind that if you decide to go any of these different directions, if you go to Georgia, Kansas, Oklahoma, or Alabama, there are various differences there. Not only are you dealing with topography differences, you're dealing with environmental differences, you're dealing with different weather, you're dealing with different culture. There's so many variations when it comes to our country. The difference between Southern California, the Northwest, the Northeast versus the Midwest and the South is really stark. So if you decide to go this direction, you'll be exposed to different opportunities in different environments. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just different. And what we are going to see is that as people begin to migrate into what we are calling now Zoom towns, where people are more encouraged to work remotely, so they're gonna go and set up routes in these areas. And it doesn't even have to be an area that has a financial incentive to do so. We are seeing other lower cost of living cities getting a boom of people moving there. For example, Redfin has recent data that shows people are leaving for areas such as Sacramento, they're going to Las Vegas, they're going to places in Texas, and we're seeing these towns kind of stand up where people are working more remotely, where we have these digital nomads. And it's becoming all the more prevalent now where work from home is becoming the norm in our economy and in our society as a whole. Now, I find it fascinating from a political perspective, this is going to have an interesting impact on these different states. As you lure people away from different areas that might have a different political opinion, they might bring that same political opinion with them. For example, in the recent presidential election, we saw the state of Arizona go Democratic and we saw the state of Georgia go Democratic. Now, those two states had not gone Democratic for quite some time when it came to the presidential election cycle. Obviously, you could break that down. It could be the specific political candidates who were associated with that which flipped it in a certain way, but also some of this demographic differences and people I can speak specifically to this are now leaving the state of California because of the cost of living and they're moving to states like Arizona, which are less expensive, but generally lean more conservative politically. So it's just a very interesting thing. But furthermore, what we're gonna find is economically, this is going to be a very positive development when it comes to your opportunity to pursue a position because now companies are going to be pursuing people no matter where they live. So you're going to have the opportunity to actually apply for different individual opportunities that exist, even if you live in a different state or a different city. So from that vantage point, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens in our economy over the next 10 or 20 years as technology continues to advance. So if you're able to position yourself right now in a more financially feasible uh, situation moving forward, where your cost of living is lower, but your income is still much higher, that could really be a beneficial step to take if you're struggling right now financially, or if you're not satisfied with the area you live in. Now for myself personally, I do not have that ability to work remotely. My job does require me to be there personally, so I'm not going to do so. And also I really enjoy living in California because of the weather, because of the surf, because of the opportunities and routes I have established here. But I will say this is an interesting opportunity, not only to go into a lower cost of living area, but to also have a financial incentive attributed to that. It's going to create an entire new market where cities are now competing with one another and workers are going to have the advantage to be able to select what city they live in and where they're going to establish some potential routes. Another element that is contributing to this is because of the pandemic, some of the normal attractions that big cities and coastal towns had to offer are no longer available. People who lived in New York City might have loved the Broadway scene or wanted to go to restaurants in San Francisco or have the opportunity to go out to clubs or do a different things that just aren't feasible right now when it comes to the pandemic and social distancing guidelines and public health related protocols. So what we're seeing is this is driving people moving forward into this direction. Now I've talked previously that it looks like there is some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to the pandemic we should be in a better situation because of the vaccine and because of some of the things moving forward when it comes to how this is actually going to be implemented throughout the world but we're going to enter into a new world no matter what so people who decide right now that they're not able to take advantage of some of the cultural aspects and some of the opportunities that exist in some of these bigger cities that are more well known for that are now going to migrate into these other areas of the country and what we'll see is then more culture will develop there they'll in ingratiate themselves with the people who live in that area but also you might see new restaurants be developed, new theater scenes, new opportunities that exist because you're seeing a new influx of different demographics going throughout our country. So it's really interesting. It's fascinating to me personally. And as you see this moving forward, it should be nice to know that you have more opportunities than you did before the pandemic existed. 
With all that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please like the video. That would really help the channel out for the YouTube algorithm. Help push this video to other people who might need to hear it. Because you might have a friend or a family member who is working remotely right now, and they're looking for an opportunity to relocate, and this incentive program might provide them with the very incentive they need to go and do so, where it could benefit them financially. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, get to know you, do any research on your behalf, and answer any questions on your behalf so that way you can make well-informed decisions moving forward. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally, as I do everything I can to create content that will make a positive impact in your life by encouraging you and myself to lead lives of meaning and purpose, all while maintaining balance and moderation. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. I hope you have a wonderful remainder of your day. Talk to you next time.